Welcome back. We are bringing in guests that I met on Zoom, but bringing them into the room. That's this entire hour. Our next guest um, was brought to the show when we were talking about women facing health care crisis. A term called medical gaslighting was popping up in conversations everywhere. Celebrities like Oprah, for example, were talking about it. And it's when your pain or symptoms are minimized or even dismissed by a health professional. It disproportionately, as we learn, happens to women. And this causes women to be misdiagnosed and even delay treatment. It, by the way, was one of our most talked about and most viewed shows ever. Christine Bronstein shared how she took an at-home colon cancer test. And when it came back positive, she told her doctor the results. And that doctor sent her a text message with a smiley face emoji saying she didn't have cancer. Well, Christine insisted on a colonoscopy, and it revealed she had stage three colon cancer. I decided to order an at-home colon cancer screening test. When the results came back positive, I was completely devastated. I immediately texted my primary care doctor to find out what the next steps would be. His response was, you don't have cancer, smiley face. And at that point, I think I just threw my phone down. I insisted on a colonoscopy and it revealed that I had a two inch tumor in my rectum. When you got that response from your doctor with the smiley face, and I, I heard you say you, you threw the phone down, um, did you think that he thought, well, okay, it's a home test, maybe she administered it wrong? How did you process that moment? Well, I'm in the middle of getting my master's degree in health informatics, so I was sort of acutely aware of how inappropriate that text was. Yeah. You know, I felt sort of alone, like, oh, our next steps are gonna be completely on me, and so I was quite terrified. I was hopeful because it's also like a super preventable cancer if caught early. Um, mine, unfortunately, was just not caught early enough. We ended <clears throat> that interview with all of us in tears because Christine was uncertain about her future. She did not know if she was going to live. Christine, though, is back with an update. She flew in from Hawaii to be here from the Zoom for the first time in the room. We're meeting her together. Please bring out survivor Christine Bronstein. <laughs> already tearing up. Oh, don't, it's, now I'm gonna cry. Um, <laughs> uh, it's surreal that you're here. You it look is. amazing. Thank you. You look I happy. Feel great. Where where are things now? So um, in March, well even before that, I got a, a test that was very positive. That was just a blood test, and um, I had to go back for final scans in March, so just a few weeks ago. And there's this thing called scanxiety that you get, so that was really stressful. Um, but my scans were clearing, so I'm in the mission. <laughs> we, have, Thank you. Um, we have some women in our audience who said the cancer survivor here, so I knew oh. this story would resonate. Um, in remission, Take me back, we met on that Zoom call. Yeah. No, people ask me constantly about you oh. because it was such a jarring story to say, I reach out to my doctor, that doctor sent back an emoji and then you learned you actually had cancer. Yeah. It, what was the response when you saw people? After oh, the such a great, I mean, I got um, connected to so many people who were either going through it <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of advocacy work that makes me feel, you know, made me strong through my treatment. Um, and then just a lot of people who are having a hard time getting colonoscopies, even though it's the age is 45 now, you shouldn't be having a hard time getting a colonoscopy at, at 45. If you're healthy, that's still the time to get it. Right. Um, but I got people, mine, people, people, I was inspired. <laughs> I was inspired by you. But you know, that, that experience of this term medical gaslighting. Yeah. Now so many people are talking about it. As I said, disproportionately impacts women, women of color, where you walk in, you know your symptoms are real, you know your pain is real, and you are dismissed. 
And you've yeah. talked a lot about empowering women yeah. to stick up and advocate for yourself. Absolutely, and you do. And, and part of the reason is interesting too is that, that doctors don't know what they don't know. And so at least for on the colorectal cancer side, that it's growing at a really alarming rate in young people. Mm. So it's doubling and they don't know why. Um, as many cases, it was just in the New York Times that twice as many cases in young people as there was 15 years ago. Wow. And so doctors are just not up to date. They don't think cancer when they look at a, someone presenting really healthy, clean blood scans. Um, so, you know, it's that fine line of you have to know your body and you have to push and you have to get yeah. your prevention and your screenings and get to the right doctor. Wow. Next up, Christine's husband, Phil, joins us and the life-saving information she wants to share with the TAM fam. We'll be right back. I mean, I'm staring at you. The last one. What life means to me today is that every moment is precious. Right before my surgery, I was like, okay, if I live through this, I'm gonna get a horse. And that's how I met Oliver Giovanni Valentino Braunstein. He's our survival horse and he keeps me healthy and busy all the time. <laughs> Another love of mine, which we have lots of here in Maui, is the beach. That is a love I get to share with my family, which is really beautiful. Going through cancer was powerful and made me appreciate my friends and family. For me, happiness is not reaching some goal in the future, but it's just being in the moment. So don't let this present moment go by without giving thanks for it. Welcome back. That was our guest, Christine Bronson, sharing her new appreciation of life. She is now in remission from colorectal cancer. This is her first time in person. We met Christine on Zoom. Now she's in the room. Um, I remember we ended the interview that last time and you said you, doctors did not believe your body, they were unsure if yeah. your body was responding to treatment. Yeah, so I had just come back from a scan and um, I think we also had to get up quite early yeah. a light time. But um, yeah, so they said they didn't know if it was shrinking or not. So I had to reschedule my surgery date. They pushed out my surgery date, gave me more chemo. So you went through 12 rounds of chemo. 12 rounds of chemo. Surgery. Surgery. Over the course of a year. Yes. And here you are. And I love the reflection on life, the whores, just the reappreciation or new appreciation, I guess, is the yeah. word, of life. New appreciation, like, so grateful every moment because I was really close to losing it. It's the second most deadly cancer. It takes a lot of people. And I got really lucky that it did respond so well. Well, I know um, you're, you're a wingman, if you will, standing <laughs> by. Phil, Christine's husband, is in Maui. Welcome to the show. You're still in the Zoom <laughs> box. Um, Phil, I know that, that for a loved one to watch <clears throat> someone go through what she went to went through had to be unimaginable, but you're also a journalist and you're a, um, a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, so you're a writer. The, the conversation about medical gaslighting and listening to women and having a better relationship with our doctors, are you seeing better reporting um, on this? I think there's been, Tamron, a lot of great reporting over the years, and a lot of the problems with great reporting sometimes is that nothing happens as a result. So I think each case, and you having Chris on your show, really is makes you an advocate as well, a very powerful one. I think that that is going to help for better coverage, more consistent coverage, and reaction of the kind we want to see, which is doctors taking their patients seriously. Right. And that's at the heart of it. I, I asked you the last time, I don't remember... Did you ever hear from the doctor again, the emoji doctor, we'll just call him? Yeah, yes, that, that doctor misunderstood the assignment. Yeah. That, doctor, <laughs> that doctor was like, can I come on Tamron Hall with you? <laughs> I'm so, I'm, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, Phil, 
you're in Hawaii, and I see you've got the blinds down because it's four in the morning because no one closes their blinds in, in, in Hawaii because you got all this beautifulness. So I do know that you wanted to deliver a little bit of beauty to your number one person. Oh. Phil Askus. From the Zoom to the room, we are so happy. Thank you, thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for sharing your story. Phil, thank you so much. We, you got to get out of the Zoom to the room, or we just I need to go to Hawaii. You need to we need to go to Maui.